Are you experiencing problems with customers that expect you to tidy up after them, to wash dishes and to do cleaning that you don't normally include in your normal checklist? So if that sounds like you, this is part one of what you need to include in your domestic contract. Remember, if you had any customer complaints on any of these scenarios ever happening in your business, remember to comment, oh yes, down below in the comments. So today we'll be discussing four things that you need to include in your domestic contract so you can stop working for free and stop letting your customers take advantage of you. And if you've never heard of me, I'm Ilse Whiteman, the cleaning coach, and I'm the creator of the Cleaning Coach Training Academy. So the first thing you need to include in your customer contract is obviously the checklist of what you agree that you are going to clean. But it's not just a checklist of clean this room or clean that room. You need to specify exactly what you do. Do you empty that bin and do you add a bin liner in that room? Where do we dust? How do we dust? And what is included in the dusting? It's not just a general dust. Like for instance, if you haven't agreed to, for in, say for instance, dust the curtains, that is something that your customer needs to know that you're not doing her curtains for her, which in an everyday dust, that probably will be included to open the curtains, dust in between and then shut them, especially the area on top where a lot of dust gathers. However, if that's not in your checklist, they don't know. You just have to make your customer aware of every single thing you do. And also with your checklist, you have to include what materials you supply for what, what materials they supply and for what, then they won't expect you to supply bin liners because that is an item they use in their everyday life, so they should supply it. What you supply as a cleaning company is the materials that you use for your cleaning company or to do the cleaning because you know what works. They don't know what works. They might have an inkling and they might have some products that's handy, but you as a cleaning business owner know for a fact what works the quickest way. And remember at any point, if you want to get more customers into your cleaning business, remember to download my roadmap that will guide you through how to get more customers. The link will be in the show notes down below. Right, so the second item we will cover that needs to be in your domestic contract, which a lot of cleaning companies sort of fail to let their customers know or don't include in their contract is an upsell list. Now, what's an upsell list? This is basically letting your customers know that the property as it stands in the beginning, when you go and look at it, it's all nice and tidy and it's all not too bad cleaning wise. It needs to be like that every time you visit because you have a certain amount of time to get the cleaning done. If you get there the week after and there's loads tidying up or they've left you a sink full of washing up, then you're gonna take longer. And technically, it's not the customer's fault. It's only they're not aware of the fact that they're not allowed to do that because that's not how it works. You need to teach your customers, this is how cleaning works and leaving us a sink full of dishes or leaving us to tidy up your whole entire house, it is definitely a extra. So they need to pay extra. If you ever faced this problem in the past, it's probably because your customer don't know there is an extra yet. However, you can include it, your current customers now as well. You simply send them a list and make them aware of the very specific rules you have to do with tidying up. So what is an upsell list? It is everything that is not included in your normal daily routine checklist for that customer. So say for instance, you have two hours, you know for a fact it's cleaning the kitchen, cleaning the bathroom, cleaning all the rooms and all the living areas to a certain standard without any extras. Like washing up dishes, tidying up. You can make yourself an upsell list or inside my private Facebook group, there is a list that will include under the file section. The link will be below if you want to get your hands on my upsell list. Basically what it all includes is you go single oven costs this much, double oven costs this much. Inside the fridge cleaning empty costs this much. With food costs this much. Inside kitchen cupboards costs this much. Outside kitchen cupboards costs this much. Carpet washing costs as much. Window cleaning costs as much. Everything that is an extra. You have to remind your customers at all times that you do these cleaning and it's extras. So when you first get your customer, you would let them know, make them aware and tell them this is our extra list. If there is tidying up to be done, we will charge you 10 pounds a room extra. If we come in and there's a sink full of dishes, obviously, because that's gonna take us longer, it will be X amount 
per plate. If you want any extra spring cleaning done, please call us for a quote. And if you want any of this work done on an extra basis, please make sure you call us the week before so we can schedule it in to do it while we're at your house, which means you can get it a little bit cheaper than booking in as a separate cleaning job. What you're doing is you're reminding them that you do all these other cleanings so they don't get other cleaning companies in to then clean the oven or clean the inside of the fridge because they might not even know you offer that service. And believe me, you will have to let them know every time over and over and over again. Every time you give them an invoice, remember to give them a upsell list attached to your invoice. Why? They'll forget. Or they might think about it and then can't find it and then they, oh, well, I need an arm cleaner, so they're just going to go and call another company. And if another cleaning company is really good at reminding them all the time, you then make one mistake and they're like, well, you know, that company said they do cleaning, maybe I'll try them. So it's all about reminding your customers all the time that you do all cleaning, all the time. And if you now maybe think, oh, I don't do, I don't do carpet cleaning, oh, I don't do window cleaning, that's fine. Now you offer window cleaning as well. It's about being a all-in-one source for your customer, somewhere they can go with all their cleaning needs. Obviously include deep cleaning, spring cleaning, all the stuff that you don't normally do on a normal basis. And you might now be thinking, but I don't do deep cleaning yet. That's fine. Just let them know now that you're doing it because as your business grows, you will and could add that to the services you provide. But it's just reminding them. And hey, they might say to you, look, we're moving out. Uh, could you do it? Of course, because you've reminded them on the upsell list. And every time a customer says something or something happens that they expect you to do extra, like you're there for two hours cleaning and the customer says, oh, while you're here, can you just quickly clean all my windows and my house inside, outside as well? That can't be done because you don't have time. You probably will be able to get all the windows done, but nothing else. So it's about making them aware that this is not how it works. It's just educating them on how your business works. And in this part, you can also state that you have a open floor policy and an open worktop policy. And all this means is don't clutter it. If one week we've got two bottles and the next week we come, you've got 16, we have to charge you more. It would just take you so much longer to do. And it's just about protecting your business and make sure it runs smoothly without your customers complaining, well, it wasn't cleaned. But then you can say, but you, did you, you read the contract, you signed the contract, so I presume that you were aware of the fact that we can't do that, it's an extra, we don't have the extra time. What we quoted you for is general cleaning standards. That's it. But you have to just obviously let them know before. You can't just now say, oh, but it's extra. Let them know, send an email out, let all your customers know, this is how we operate, this is how we work from now on. So they're aware that they can't do these things or expect you to do extra on literally a split second's worth of notice. You could also specify if this is not included in your normal checklist, that you can specify if they want you to clean behind beds, behind bedside cabinets, behind sofas, behind all these items to make life easier for you is for them to actually just put it away from the wall when you come, it's all pulled away. So you can actually ask your customers, help us clean better for you by if you want us to move sofas and move beds and clean behind big items, you can move them away yourself. We'll clean behind and we'll push it back. So that way it's a solution for you and it's a solution for them. You'll know where the furniture is pulled out, where they want to clean behind. And also it makes your job easier because it's already done. So the third thing you have to add in your customer contract is, Right, so we get Christmas, Easter, birthdays, anniversaries, and all these things going on. So you go into a customer's house and you normally clean like you normally do, and it's not too bad, not too much tidying up, I hope. And all of a sudden you walk in and there's 100 cards everywhere. What do you do? Do you move them? Do you clean underneath? Because technically you should, because you won't be doing your job properly. Or do you say to your customer in the beginning, in your customer contract, and ask them, what do you want us to do with Christmas, birthday, Easter, all the occasions there is? Like if you've got cards out, do you want us to remove them, clean underneath, or do you want us to leave that area? Or are you gonna move those cards? Because if you don't, there will be an extra charge of 15 pounds or whatever you wanna charge them. This is saying to them, Keep your house as it is in the beginning, all the time the same way. So you're just 
clearly covering yourself. And your staff will probably take a lot longer to clean during Christmas times because there's so much cards and Christmas decorations, everything everywhere. Do they remove the items and clean underneath or do they just clean around it? But at least the customer will then be aware if she's ticked, no, I don't want to be charged extra and no, I'm not removing the cards. At least you know then that you are safe. You're not going to get a complaint about your staff didn't clean behind the cards. Remember to comment yes down below if you agree to stop working for free and that they can't just add, keep adding work to you, to your schedule or to your staff's schedule. So the fourth thing you need to include in your domestic contract is pricing schedule. How do you price? How does it work? How do you get invoiced? When you get paid? What happens if you don't get paid? What happens if you don't get paid on time? So in simple terms, you can say to them, when we start on the first, say for instance of June, the first day we start, we will give you a invoice. That will be for the end of the month. The only reason you'll receive it when we first start is by the end of the month, you've had 30 days to pay that invoice. And this will then counteract the fact that you will might have cash flow issues because you have then have to wait to the end of the month to invoice them. Then they take 30 days to pay you, which sometimes is a pain in the bottom for cleaning business owners because you still have to pay your staff at the end of the month. And if you still have to wait 30 days to get paid. So that will actually solve any cash, cash flow problems you might have and you'll have the money in your bank account before you have to pay your staff. So this also has to be in your terms and conditions, but put this onto your contract as well because it's so important and because so many people struggle with being paid. And it's simply, you have 30 days to pay this invoice. You're gonna have it in the beginning of the month. If you send out invoices at the end of the month, you give them a 15 day term and you state, we will charge you 1.5% or 2% interest or 10% interest, whatever you want as a cleaning company for every day that invoice is late. So if you send up the invoice at the end of the month, 15 days is gone, they still haven't paid that invoice, then you give them another invoice with interest added. And then you state that invoice has got, with the interest added, has got five days to be paid. Then if they don't pay that invoice, so in total that's 20 days they have to pay, then you will not come in and clean until that invoice is paid. Now, you might find that some customers will be rebellious against this. They might not like it, but you need your money. You work hard. You need to pay your staff, right? Remember to comment yes below if you agree with that one. So then what you say to your customers in the beginning and you tell them this, do not expect them to read your contract because they probably won't. They probably will never look at your terms and conditions because they don't care. I mean, how many terms and conditions do you read of every product you buy? Not many all the small print. So make them aware, tell them like, this is how payments work. I'm going to invoice you at the beginning of the month. There will be interest charge for every single day that the invoice is late. You'll have five days to pay. If that invoice is not paid within that 20 day period, then we will not come in and clean until it's paid. And when this happened, because some customers are going to try to push you and they are going to try to take liberties, then you simply Call them and say, we can't come in cleaning because it's not paid. And you have to pay it for 48 hours before the next clean is due because if you don't and you pay it for us the minute before we come, that cleaning is still cancelled. And it might mean once or twice you might lose a weekly amount because your customer hasn't paid. However, I can promise you they will not do it very often because they know how important it is for them to clean for the cleaning to actually be done. So they know they're going to have to pay. Be strict. Just because you're a cleaning company does not mean people can take advantage of you. It's just being strict. Every other company out there, they have to pay up front. So why do you have to wait? So to make invoicing easier as well, you can actually say to your customers, we spend this amount of time, we, we charge this per job or we charge this per hour. And what we'll do is we'll take your weekly payment, say for instance, it's hundred pounds. We'll multiply that by 52 weeks in a year. And then we'll divide that so it will give you a monthly total. So you don't have to worry about, oh, this month's got four weeks and that month's got five weeks. So it's basically the same amount on any invoice. And if for some reason a week gets missed, you just take the weekly total of that main amount. But this will make invoicing easier. Your customers know exactly what they pay on a monthly basis, apart from any extras that might apply. And it just makes the invoicing and the payment system so much easier. Always remember to include your payment details on every single invoice you send out and your contract 
and in your terms and conditions. And remember to state that if they pay by check, because then you have to take the check to the bank and wait for it to clear, you charge two or three pounds a week extra because most people do online banking these days and it's so much simpler just to do it. But some customers are lazy, they just wanna write you a check. So part two is coming up next week. Make sure you give me the thumbs up, subscribe, press that red button, press the bell so you can get notified when next week part two of what you need to include in your domestic customer contract to stop working for free. So you can get notifications when that video will be live. And if you'd like to know more about how to charge, whether you should charge per hour or per job, remember to check out last week's video and remember to check out my other videos. One of them actually states what you need to do on your walkthrough with a new customer to make sure you get a yes on every visit. So that's it for this week, guys. 